Late Show host Stephen Colbert talks with VP Biden in first TV interview since Election Day. CBS Late Show host Stephen Colbert recruited Vice President Joe Biden to hold a heart-to-heart -heart family meeting with America on Tuesday, hoping the father figure with actual authority could share some comforting wisdom following the country's sudden changes, referring to himself as dead and to Biden as pops. Colbert proclaimed, to his audience. We know that you're worried about the changes the family is going through. It happens to every family. But I'll telling you, this terrible feeling you're having right now. It's not permanent, the vice president said. It'll be over in four years, maybe eight. Pops Joe then offered a frank but insightful observation into American democracy. Albeit it one embedded in a metaphor about mowing the lawn. Look kid, he said. It doesn't matter who's mowing it. The point is, it's the greatest lawn in the world and no matter our differences, we're all responsible for its upkeep. I've got to believe that in their heart. The next mower is going to do the best they can to make sure that lawn that everyone feels safe to have a picnic on it. Following the candid family meeting, Colbert sat down with Biden for a more serious conversation. In his first TV interview since Election Day, Biden discussed everything from his decision not to launch a 2016 presidential bid to the possibility of a future run for the Oval Office. Despite the outcome, the 45th vice president reiterated that he made the right decision for his family when he decided not to run, alluding to the death of his son, Beau Biden whom he lost to cancer nearly a year and a half ago, I'm not sure I would have been able to put my whole heart into it. But what I regret is the circumstances that led me not to be able to run, he said. Mr. Biden, who has spent nearly four decades in public service, stirred a media frenzy Monday night when a Capitol Hill reporter asked if he would consider running for president in 2020. Biden replied with, yeah I am. I am going to run. A few moments later, however, he clarified his statement saying he's not committing to running but that he's leaving it up to fate. In an exchange on The Late Show, Biden said age wouldn't factor into his decision. I can't see the circumstance in which I'd run but what I learned a long, long time ago, Stephen, is to never say never, he said. You don't know what's going to happen. Hell. Donald Trump's going to be 74, I'll be 77, and in better shape. What the heck? But he also said that approaching Trump's administration with an obstructionist mindset won't get the country far. Instead, he urged all Americans to give President-elect Trump an actual even shot to collaborate with him when he has good ideas and to challenge him when he doesn't. this show you know I'm something of an art authority <laughs> so I know an art superstar when I see one folks and tonight I celebrate a new one painter John McNaughton who is quickly becoming the darling of conservative art lovers hey hold it right there Colbert you're gonna show the work of that right-wing artist then I demand equal time for progressive artist Michael D'Antuono that's me since you showed his portrait of Obama, it's only fair that you show my painting of the president. And since you showed his political painting using religious symbolism, it's only balanced that you show mine. Come on, Steve, you have to do it. In the interest of fairness and balancedness... Yeah, that's a word. Hey, hey truthiness is a word. <laughs> but that's not the point. The point is, the people are behind me on this. Oh yeah. Oh, they're demanding it. Stephen Colbert, please be fair and set a good example for the children. What? Hey, go on, Colbert, come in. What do you say you let my friend Mikey D come on your show? He comes, he sits, you talk for a while, forget about it. Let's go. You boys want to hold it down there? Sorry, boys. Yo, I'm going to be watching you. Okay. Please, Mr. Colbert, please put Michael D'Antuano on your show. Pretty please, 
So is art. Teddy bear back. Stephen, please show Dan Toronto's work. Who's a jerk? No, I mean give him equal time. Oh, 3.15. I said put him on his show. Gesundheit. Oh, Ethel. They're so upset, the crowds are protesting in the streets. It's your call, Colbert. Make the right one. Paid for by the Coalition of Patriotic American Citizens for D'Antuano's Equal Time on the Colbert Report. همزمان با انتشار خبری در پایگاه اطلاع رسانی دولت آمریکا مبنی بر پیشنهاد ضرب سکه یک تریلیون دلاری رئیس جمهور آمریکا جک لیو مدیر کارکنان کاخ سفید را به عنوان وزیر جدید خزانهداری معرفی کرد منتقدان میگویند اوباما رفیق بازی کرده است اما انتشار خبر احتمال ضرب سکه یک تریلیون دلاری برای مقابله با بدهی 16 تریلیون دلاری سر و صدای زیادی به پا کرده و دستمایه تمسخر دولت آمریکا شده است. We should have known a coin was Obama's solution to everything. It was right there in his slogan. Change. تنز پردازان حتی درباره این که عکس کدام یک از مقامات آمریکایی باید روی این سکه ضرب شود بازی های زیادی به راه انداختند از عکس شخصیت های هولناک فیلم های هالیوودی تا عکس با اسبانی این وضع یعنی اوباما البته جی کارنی سخنگوی کاخ سفید این مطلب را تایید نکرد When he signed in, yes, red flag, or hope he fell alive. Why? Here she was, never sucked the ass. I don't care about my pants, including Donald Trump. But. video was removed by YouTube so I had to re-upload the video on another website please follow the link in the description Thanks for watching and don't forget to click the link below in order to find out more.
Well, Donald Trump continues to dominate the presidential field. Thank you so much for reading my lines for it me. It happens sometimes. Leland. Like Leland said, Donald Trump is dominating the GOP field. New polls this week puts Trump on top with a 16-point lead, but potential voters have so far given him a pass on a series of reversals and flip-flops that would normally sink a candidate. The real estate mogul argues he has evolved. Fox News correspondent Doug McElway looks at these changes and if Trump will be able to keep his lead. Read my lips. No. Three years after presidential candidate George H.W. Bush said that, he signed into law an increase on recording device royalties. Opponents relentlessly hounded him with accusations of flip-flopping on taxes. Fair or not, the flip-flop accusation has damaged many a candidate. I actually did vote for the $87 billion before I voted against it. Do you think a mandate, mandating people to buy insurance, is the right tool? Uh, Brett, I don't know how many hundred times I've said this, too. This is an unusual interview. <laughs> All right, let's do it again. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. Donald Trump now sits high atop the Republican field, undamaged by numerous flip-flops on abortion, for example. I'm, I'm very pro-choice. I hate the concept of abortion. Uh, so I'm pro-life, but with the caveats. And you have to have with, with the caveats. On campaign financing. I'm using my own money. I'm not using the lobbyists. I'm not using donors. I don't care. I'm really rich. We have a lot of small contributors. I, I would even take big contributors as long as they don't expect anything. Trump once favored the legalization of drugs. Now he's opposed. He once opposed a flat tax proposed by Steve Forbes. Now he wants a simpler code. He once proposed a ban on assault weapons and supported longer wait times for guns. He no longer does. He once supported the privatization of Social Security. Now he does it. Why are his supporters so forgiving? He sounds like you're talking to your, your, maybe your uncle who is just a little cranky, but is telling it like it is. People relate to that. He's funny. I think a lot of other conservatives who are supporting him are just not aware of uh, all of the liberal positions he's taken over the years. Uh, and until somebody spends a lot of money on ads publicizing those positions, they're not going to know about them. I've evolved on many issues over the years, and you know who else has is Ronald Reagan evolved on many issues. Reagan was a one-time Democrat who defended his switch to the GOP, saying, quote, I didn't leave the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party left me. Also frequently hounded for many policy and party switches, Winston Churchill fired back at his critics, quote, some men change their party for the sake of their principles, others their principles for the sake of their party. In Washington, Doug McElway, Fox News. Nice quote about Churchill. Let's bring in our fair and balanced panel, Angela McGlowan, Fox News contributor and radio show host Mark Levine. All right, so Angela, yes. do you think that the flip-flops are a matter of principle or a matter of politics for Donald Trump? Well, Donald Trump is political, but he's not a politician. And that's why people are attracted to him. He, everybody loves success, Leland. So I think people evolve, like Donald Trump said, I was once a Democrat. I changed uh, to uh, be re a Republican at the age of 23. So we, we evolve in what we believe, and that includes political ideology. Mark, Mark uh, in the event that uh, Mr. Trump is the front runner, does these kinds of flip-flops really help a potential uh, Democratic nominee in a debate? Uh, they may help the Democrat, but they won't harm his uh, big popularity among Republicans. The people who support Donald Trump don't care what his positions are. They don't support him because of his positions. They support him because he's an amiable, filthy rich, rude, ignorant blowhard. They, oh, okay. they, they like him. Basically, he's Stephen Colbert. In fact, he's the caricature that Stephen Colbert used to play for all these years. So Stephen uh, Colbert, Mark, 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 Mark. Uh, you know, I, I, I really, I, I so often wonder what you're really mm -hmm. thinking. And finally, now we found. Now, out. It's fabulous. But if you think about what the American people think. Look at the Quinnipiac, what they call the word cloud. So they ask people, what's the first word that comes to mind when you say this person's name? This is the word cloud that came out. And Mark, it's not much different than uh, what you just said, uh, although a couple of them are actually censored, so we can't say them on TV. <laughs> Clown, idiot, crazy, uh, blowhard, arrogant, outspoken. I, I think I see one joke, showman. I see one word in there uh, that's good, and that would be honest. So how do people like him, Mark, under your theory, if 
they have all of these words associated with Here's him. why they like him. They don't like him for his policies. They don't care about his policies. They like him because they're opposed to the way politics are right now. They okay. hate the Republican establishment. They don't like Republicans in Congress. They don't like Jeb Bush, who's a pale imitation of his brother and his tired policies. Republicans are tired of their leaders. Okay. They want to throw all the bums out. And Donald Trump expresses that Listen, angst, Mark, that I've anger had, I've in their hearts. I've had people from my community who are Democrats who like Trump. So, you know, don't say people don't, you Angela, know, well, Angela, not Angela, Angela, before, b Angela, before we get uh -huh. to whether Democrats like Trump, I'm interested in this. To, to Mark's point in terms uh -huh. of so many Republicans who like him because he's anti-establishment, is the establishment in the Republican Party starting to get worried that Donald Trump actually presents a chance, uh, a, a real fight for Jeb Bush and for Marco Rubio and for Walker, the so-called establishment candidates, and that all of a sudden the Republican nomination could go to Donald Trump? The Republican nomination is not going to go to Donald Trump. Donald Trump does not set the platform for the Republican Party, and no, the establishment is not worried. Now, I don't like the fact that you have candidates that are now actually giving Trump more attention. I wish that our candidates would actually talk about the issues and not even mention Trump. And that's why people like Trump more, because now some of our other candidates seem like they're following Trump's lead. Here's how you know that Donald Trump is a protest candidate rather than a real candidate. Okay. Number two is Ben Carson also not an establishment candidate. People aren't voting for Trump because they like Donald Trump. I mean, he's amiable, he's fun, he's fun to watch. They're voting for Donald Trump, supporting him in the polls because they don't like the Republican establishment, and that's why Ben Carson's doing well as well. Interesting point on Ben Carson. <laughs> Angela, last word. Listen, this is a long political season, and the American people are tired of being sick and tired, and they don't like <laughs> politicians. That's why Trump is exciting folks right now. The oh-so-diplomatic Mark Levine and his descriptions. <laughs> Angela McGlowan, uh, slightly uh, slightly uh, more diplomatic. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very much for both you. of you guys. Thank you, Thank you. All the best. Thanks. All right, great. January the 18th, 2017. Are we really in that age and that time? Is that right? Hello, everybody. How's your eardrums working? Good. Good. We got a whole bunch of fake news to get cracking, smacking, whacking. Fake news has become a household name. And in the attempt to repair the damage done to them over the last several years. Hi, everybody. Hi, Elaine. I'm Thirst. <laughs> and I got a big audience tonight. <laughs> and so we're making a transition to start covering the fake news and explaining it pointing fingers at it. It'll be a slow grind this week, but we'll come into our own over the next week or so. It's the way it works when you're transitioning. I'm just trying to get everything working proper. Hi, Debbie. And Lane, Shanigan. That's what we got. And Brian, Nelly, Nip. Everybody sitting on the fence and TV land and joining the stream later. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It's a simple stream. No stress. No worry. Nothing too overwhelming. Just talking about what? Talking about Stephen Colbert with these connotations. And then his source for the story CNN. CNN was faking, faking terrorist attacks. They were faking terrorist attacks. And yet some reason, in order to get us 
crack at Trump gets ready for one day, day one-ish, late show with Stephen Colbert. He actually doesn't make any points here about get ready. It was all about coming out and kicking at Trump before he gets... Because Hillary Clinton, with a history of mass murder, was so much better. Hillary Clinton, with an agenda for mass slaughter and enslavement, is so much better. It could have been a, like you could have elected a, a fucking shoehorn, and people would have been just as happy as Trump getting Trump. It was about not getting Hillary. They didn't give a fuck who. Who was running? They they just didn't want fucking Hillary, and then your sources for white nationalists, white nationalists, prick. A little late for that one, Dana. Christmas Gone Boy. Still a good song, man. Obama says he granted Manning, Bradley Manning, or Chelsea, clemency in pursuit of justice. Really? Really? Like you pursued justice in the last eight years somewhere you can point out? And nobody can point and say that, hey, you know, you were a fucking nightmare everywhere. Police officer wanted to go whack you. Remember that? <laughs> Let me be clear. He's a corporate whore. North Carolina, North Carolina teacher screams at her students. Criminal to criticize Obama. Talk about fake news. Remember fake news? We got some fake news. Real fake news. Look Obama there in the center waving. <laughs> what a dick, man. Al-Qaeda vows to help re-elect President Obama. This is satire, hopefully. One person liked it anyway. Just satire. Because he's so good for misery. He's so good for agony. He's so good for any bad guy on the planet. Obama, whatever the president may be, doesn't really matter. Obama has been exceptionally good. That's all. Snopes.com. <laughs> Snopes.com. Dana, how did you just jump from one to Snopes? It was easy. Snopes is supposed to be the arbiter, the arbiter of news. How is that even conceivable that a site that's going to hire just any shithead like Alex up there? Is supposed to be someone we can put our fate into? What kind of mental illness is that? When these people are obviously deceptive. The 35,000 service members that died, they could have died from anthrax vaccination. Nobody knows for sure. It, well, when it comes to Snopes or me. But one thing we know was there was at least that many died from depleted uranium munitions. Right? In Desert Storm, this is what they're talking about. The Highway of Death, one of the most toxic wars in history. But it's interesting because Snopes also went freaked out about anti-vaccine advocate. No, it's not an anti-vaccine. It's somebody who questions are vaccines being used appropriately. Vaccines have a purpose, but it's been co-opted by the system. Now, we'll be covering Snopes regularly, so we're not going to waste our precious time per se tonight. But it is interesting to see those two stories together, see? Right, is it not? Uh, January 11, 2000, and then January 18th. Two different stories that seem unrelated, but when you're talking about how whatever the fuck this site is, Snopes, 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 rumor has it that it's very solid that these people are uh, scum 
of the earth. And these are the lowest forms of life. And we will prove that repeatedly. Once again, when you talk about people dying, you don't just burn it off and say, well, it didn't happen. They didn't die because they died. You don't explain it away by doing that. It doesn't work that way. So Snopes got to go. Drudge Report. He feeds you... Well, the first thing you're going to get is 318 cookies when you go to Drudge Report, and they're going to rape your computer sometimes for years after from just that one experience. Second, they linked over to CNN, and CNN, of course, with all the fake news. And CNN, right, ran that fake news that got us into war so why is Drudge using, why is Drudge re going to, anyway, George Bush had some, they got some fake news in this today. President Barack Obama said about George Bush Sr. and his wife, both of them in the hospital, both misery machines, both agony machines, both were voted out of the office after the first term, him and his wife. So they've not only dedicated their lives to this country, this is Obama, been a constant source of friendship and support and good counsel over the years. He says in the bottom sentence, they are as fine as a couple as we know. Calling the Bushes really good people. Does anybody know what the fuck he is talking about? Does anybody know what that the, what, what he's talking about? Because I sure as fuck got no concept of what that man is talking about. Obama kissed the ring. So apparently new bomb threats against Jewish communities. Centers across U.S. raises alarms. Yeah, it'd be alarm if there was actually a bombing. But they don't even go and find out who made all the phone calls. They don't even try to find out. What, like, do you get where, what's going on here? This is Drudge this morning, but he pulled it off his site after a few hours, but he pumped it out there, and now it's got traction, yeah? Now, Drudge at the same time ran another story that's gone about soldiers, or Israeli soldiers being preyed upon honey traps with Hamas using Twitter and Instagram to try to pretending they're females and trying to seduce the Israeli soldiers. This is what Israel does all the time is these honey traps. Israel owns Twitter, owns Facebook, owns YouTube in the context of being trolls, being despicable, dishonest, disingenuous fucking monsters. But the bombing that they're talking about, right? This Connecticut, New Jersey, Boston, Miami, never fucking happened. Someone phoned in. Nobody knows who it was. Everybody knows Dana's here speaking tonight about Jews. They're there monitoring me all over the fucking place right now as I'm talking. None of them are going to go bother wondering why. No one went and looked and see, investigated what happened to the bomb hosters who called it in. Jewish community centers around the country were again targeted with bomb threats. Like the Hamas, St. Hamas harassing Israeli soldiers in honey traps. How do you know it's not the 5 million Palestinian refugees, one of them doing it? How do you know this is not the loved ones or the victims, one of the five million Palestinian refugees that were overheard in some cities, so the government got together and went out and spread all these lies, and now they'll pick that guy up and says, oh, I'll go back to a Palestinian, but not mention that, see, Hamas is 10,000. Refugees, there's 5 million that are outside the country will never get back in. Israel stole their property and homes. 
So we're all worried about something that didn't happen. So in the bottom three sentences, some, she said some of the threats came in as robo dialers. The fuck is she talking about? And some are actual people. And then the FBI, like the FBI wasn't called in when the first one and the second one or the third one. So this is obviously staged. Right? This is staged. The FBI should go arrest that person immediately instead of sitting out there trying to monitor people like me. Oh, I think this is the world we live in now. Well, let me see. You got 5 million Palestinian refugees so you can get the biggest welfare state on the planet and then be the fourth biggest producer of weapons of misery, of agony on the planet. Oh. Lisa Fernandez contributed to this unreport that never happened. Nothing happened. But they turned it into a big story and Drudge, the worst thing on the planet, Drudge Report, pumped it down everybody's throat. Something... Fix that. Now, Roger Stone. That headline is not there for some reason. Let me go back and look and see what the freak happened. I don't see it. I don't see it. it. Must be on my desktop. Hang on. Are you stuck it over here? Not really. Realizing. Let's have a boot. fake news okay I got it over here let's go to the desktop that's not desktop damn it was I fucked up the whole time or something <laughs> who knows that's not it All right, one more time, Dana. Better get your shit together, Dana. Okay, I'm trying, man. Okay, so you got Roger Stone in the center of your page. And you got Bradley Manning. And then you got Obama and Bradley Manning with a sex change. So let her out or him out. And then all the hormone supplements are taken. Because he, she will be still pretty fucked up for another couple of years before their body chemistry starts to straighten out, apparently. Now, Roger Stone's story is really interesting. And I suspect it's fake for quite a few reasons. If you bear with me, we're going to talk about it. Now, he's allegedly been poisoned by polonium-210. Polonium-210. Polonium-210, you can see over here. Let's find it. Polonium right here. So polonium-210, this is an interesting one. Let's go look at data. Polonium-210, when they talk about it in abundance, you notice in the universe, not available, sun, not available, uh, meteorites, crust, not available. But when it comes to the ocean, for some reason, they had a number. And in humans, none. And it's naturally in humans, it's naturally in the universe, it's naturally in the sun, it's naturally in meteorites, it's naturally in the Earth's crust, but it's very tiny parts per trillion or whatever. It's an insignificant amount, see? Now, it's harmless, indigenous, normal radiation. We're all acclimated. 
the stuff that's made in a chain reaction is drastically different. And it's not a gamma, it's an alpha. Uh, it is a gamma, if I remember correctly. I'll get to that later. Because it, it's both. You can get both gamma and beta and alpha when it comes to polonium. But polonium... was implicated in the death of Alexander uh, Lenin of Vinko. Now, what makes this interesting is how did polonium-210 enter into the equation? Well, we'll find that in a second here. They were talking about Doctors didn't know what was wrong with him. And then somebody was reading a report. No gamma rays were detected. Small spike was noticed. So when they seen this small spike uh, notice, by coincidence, another scientist who had worked on Britain's early atomic bomb program decades before happened to overhear a discussion. Happened to overhear a discussion about the small spike. Really? How the fuck would you hear about a spike like this? <laughs> of early... And recognizes the gamma ray single from polonium-210. This is how they identified... What now? This is the only person in history we know this to happen to. There's no proof. The proof is alleged allegations. <laughs> it's it's all allegations, right? It's all. There's no proof. See that this is even this is what happened. It, if it was poisoned by radiation, it was mostly like the injury he got and the way he died so quick. It's emblematic of gamma, x-ray, or neutron bursts. Not, but how could you do that without being killed yourself? It, and you would die a few weeks later. This is what you would expect to happen to the homeless and the immigrants that go into Fukushima. Right? They're wearing the suits, but that don't protect you from the gamma shine, the betas, and the alphas. And so he... He died well, relatively quick. He lost all of his hair. But Roger Stone is okay. He didn't die. Roger Stone's fine. Per se. He's back to business. He's back blogging. He never wilted and died like this guy. So where... Well, Roger Stone al allegations that he was poisoned polonium-210 when there's thousands of radioactive isotopes that he should be worried about, right? He should be worried about, let me see. Well, because you got, you know, he should be worried about heavy doses americium or curium because it's the biggest byproduct of the fuel rods. It's the most abundant and out there and it, and it kills animals. And we know from the studies, um, we know from studies on animals, uh, just a tiny fraction inhaled 144 dogs, they all died. But we, we know how this stuff works. It takes several years, right, to, to come get you. It's, it's much more toxic than polonium. Is my camera screwing up? Hi, camera. Fucking hate my camera, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's a goddamn nightmare. But I got all the other equipment, which is really good, right? We got all the equipment we we tried to get. All we got left to get is a camera down the road. We're not doing that tonight, but what was it I wanted to share with you? I just wanted to get that freaking camera. I don't know why it's doing that. There you go, clean up a bit that time. The camera is just like everything else, so much money all the time to do everything. 
We ordered a... And I got no idea what I got done here. Yeah, there you go. We ordered in a microphone, wireless microphone. Uh, the back piece and everything it was $245. I paid for it. I don't got the money to do that, but I done it. Oops. <laughs> so I won't be here for 10 days, but we got to raise that much money. And you can donate at my site, thenuclearproctologist.org. Dana Dernford. And you can find me at PayPal. I don't think the links are under this video. I have to remember to stick it in there after. And I got to pay another $100 for uh, this thing yet. And so we're controlling all of our lights, our Bluetooth. And that's got other uses. Look how fucking bad that camera, man. Just torture, eh? And that's okay. We'll get through it in the future. <laughs> What was the point I want to make? So I got to raise $350 to cover that stuff. The wireless mic is so I can use the blue screen, the green screen, to do these skits that I'm going to be doing. And right now to do the skits, I'm kind of stuck in one spot with the microphone, right? Because otherwise it don't sound. If I move around, I'm talking. It doesn't work. And so I need to keep the microphone pinned here. And so it'll always have this rich, deep sound to it, right? But I got sound boards and everything. But you can't sound, make everything sound the one level. So I ordered it in. And uh, it's paid for. It'll be here hopefully five days, but at the best around 10 days. Really excited. Just the camera is the last really big piece. 4000k camera and then the lenses and then this spring you know we get the documentary out before the anniversary of fukushima coming up other stuff like that it's a long hard process when you do everything yourself and you have to do it because somebody has to come out and tell the truth there's so much fake fakery going on and people are limited to narratives. And that's extremely, it's extremely dangerous, right? Not near Baghdad. Don't believe them. They are nowhere. Not this near, is... so there's George Bush's leg, legacy. They went in and they pummeled that country, yeah? Let me get some sound work in here. I screwed up. And so, tonight wasn't, a real show, I know that, I get that, I understand that. It's, uh, because it's been a tough, tough haul getting up to this stage. And I won't stop, see, I don't know how to stop in that context. So we put out a little show tonight, fine and dandy. But uh, don't think that is what my shows are about. My shows are much more, and it'll be really good entertainment, especially with all the skits. And we'll be busy trying to get back to normal tomorrow and the next day. I had to go to probation officer yesterday. That threw me off. Uh, I'm still off a little bit. Plus, I gave up smoking last Thursday. And I haven't cheated or had a cigarette since, right? And so my nerves have been pretty shot. Uh, but I've reorganized everything here. And I'm sleeping like three times a day rather than go outdoors and pass out for an hour or two. So I don't go out and go to the shop and end up with... Now, the cigarettes I was smoking was natural tobacco without the 7,000 chemicals. Um, but I'm so frigged up in the mornings. I know I got to quit like anybody else. I'm not stupid, but... So I guess I'm finished because that's six days, right? Tomorrow afternoon will be seven days. And I don't feel like smoking. I'm thrilled, right? His urge is dear kind of a little bit, but it's irrelevant compared to the first three or four days. I almost lost my mind. So I'm organizing myself 
So I don't waste time. I'm more efficient. And smoking was definitely keeping me inefficient. Nothing wrong with it. If you smoke, I understand that 7,000 chemicals will do that to you, right? So cigarettes are not bad because of polonium-210 that are in cigarettes. They're bad because of the 7,000 chemicals. Your body is acclimated to natural polonium-210 that Roger Stone is alluding to by genetic superior selection. But the stuff that comes from a chain reaction, no matter what that isotope is, is danger, 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 right? So if you look at the natural, and so he didn't he didn't bother choosing any of these isotopes because they have signatures and we would find them. He went for the polonium um, 210 isotopes because he knows that one is natural and they, and if they look they will find some of it, right? But if he went for looking for the 211 or the 212, they wouldn't have found it. And if they found it, they would have to go investigate to try to find out. But with 210, you can't investigate because it's natural. And so it was a deception, right? Stone, Roger Stone is a hatchet man, period. Right? He's a well-known hatchet man, period. He's a political hack. Same as Alex Jones is a political hack. David Knight's a political hack. Remember what David Knight, like he, he was on the pedestal when we done symposiums in Texas about Fukushima melter reactor. And so he was, and that other guy, they heard my narrative, yet they don't repeat it even a couple of years later. Now these are political hacks to be worried about. If you're going to affiliate yourself with these organizations, you're going to tell the truth sometimes, but mostly it's a political ideology. And we got more coming up tomorrow. We'll do it again. It'll get a bit better over the next week or so. We'll be kicking ass, boating down the invisible doors. And educating people on that deception. Looking for the close out. Once again, we don't stop. We don't know how to. We are active participants. We are here to push back. Hugs for everybody. Lawrence, Amthurs, Ellie, oomph. And I quit, and he says, Shani again. Eileen is our moderator. I'm thirst. Nep killer. Hi, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Gold wing. Honda. Broken star. Yeah, video's cutting out. You might be trying to stream in too high quality. I'll check the stream after and see if it showed up. For Pilla. And that's a big thing with streams. If you try to stream in very high quality, it's you might get choppy on your end sometimes. But it could be me. I'm not saying it's not. Toxic, but you always check your stream first. Robo, Rotobo one. Hi, everybody. BD, John. And hi, everybody. Just making sure I say, Ellie, good night to everybody. That's what we do. We come in, we send out well wishes, we send out our hugs, and we send out genuine concerns for this planet and for all the species on the planet. We are forever in debt to you. You were here long before us. It is our job, we are the stewards, and we have to act like it. And we are the beginning. Hugs for everybody. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time.